Welcome to Mango Explains. Continuing on from my video where we covered installing Smappy and where to find mods, which if you have not seen and would like to, then click on the link in the top right to jump on over. If you don't like the idea of mod managers like Stardrop and want to look after your mod packs yourself, then you're in the right place and it's a lot easier than you probably think. It is as simple as downloading the mod file or files from one of the three places I mentioned in the Smappy video. Unzip the files, then paste the folder into the mods folder in your Stardew Valley install location. It is as easy as that. I said it was easy as that, but one of the biggest issues I've ever had when installing mods is not checking the requirements properly, and that is on me. So make sure you check the required mods and install those as well. Otherwise, the mod you've installed will either not work at all or be really, really buggy and may cause corruption of your save files. To find out what mods are required for the mod you've chosen, on the description page in Nexus Mods, do click on the requirements header here, then you will see what mods are required. It is also a smart idea when downloading mods to read the mod page for any information regarding the installation or updating of the mod. Some can have very specific instructions, especially if changes require things like new config files to be generated. While most of the time the default Windows Archive Extraction tool will work just fine, there may be times you need to find a third-party program. The two I know and have used are WinRAR and 7-Zip. Creating different mod packs is easy. As you can see, in my Stardew Valley install location, I have a number of different folders, all starting with the word mods. Smappy will only launch the mods that are in the folder name mods. So to change from my YouTube mod pack to my Twitch mod pack, I renamed the mods folder that currently has all my YouTube mods into mods hyphen YouTube. And then I renamed the Twitch mod pack to just mods. And then launch Smappy either by clicking the Stardew modding API.exe or by editing the launch conditions in Steam, which you can do by copying the text in the installer window when you installed Smappy and right clicking on Stardew Valley in your Steam library and clicking on properties, click the text box under launch options and then paste what you copied. When you launch Stardew Valley through Steam, it will instead launch Smappy, which will load Stardew Valley and all the mods in your mod folder. Many mods have a config file that will allow you as a player to make changes that suit you. It could be the look and feel of new buildings, it could be the keyboard shortcut to access a new feature that the mod creates. A lot of these can be changed via the config file. If you don't have a config file yet, it's probably because you haven't started Stardew Valley with that mod in the mods folder yet. If you've only just put it in there, that makes sense, right? Simply run Smappy once with the mod that you want to adjust the config for, then exit Stardew Valley. Go to the mod file location. Remember, that is where Stardew Valley is installed, and then the mods folder. Locate the folder for the mod you want to alter, and inside it there should be a config file for you to open. Now the config file normally requires specific keywords, as the program is looking for these to connect the option to a setting in game. To find out what config changes you can make, I recommend you check the page you downloaded the mod from, as the mod author will normally put the information on there for you. The console looks remarkably scary at first, however it is very neatly broken down. All mods that can be updated are displayed in purple, any errors are displayed in red, and most of the time the errors are in plain enough English that you can work out what is wrong. Updating your mods is as simple as finding out what mods you need to download. Remember that purple text in the Smappy console I just spoke about? Download a new version from the link provided by that purple text. You can copy the URL from the console by highlighting the link and right clicking. You can now paste this into your browser. Click on Files, then click on Manual Download. Then unzip the downloaded file, copy the newly created folder and paste it into your mods folder. You will be asked if you are sure you wish to replace X number of files. Say yes. This means that the mod is updated, but the config information is not destroyed and will remain. Every so often though, the mod has been updated with a large change that means the files are no longer where they were before. This means the mod author will advise you to delete the old folder before adding the updated mod. If you do not do this, you will generate a lot of red text in your Smappy console. If you've had to delete the folder, you will likely need to update your config options for the mod. Run Stardew Valley once, you should then exit and check for a new file in the mod folder called config. You can edit these with a text editing program as mentioned before. Whilst you are downloading the update, why not take the time to endorse or rate the mod? If you want help with troubleshooting mod installations, then please do check out the troubleshooting video in the playlist. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this little guide or it helped you, please don't forget to like the video as it really does help my channel. Leave me a comment down below if you have questions or I missed something that you want to see in the next Mango Explains. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, sharing and all that amazing stuff you guys do. And of course, a very special thank you to my wonderful Patreons for your amazing support. Their names are scrolling across the screen right now. Thank you so much guys, your support has meant I can start looking at doing videos like this. See you in the next one. Bye for now.